Welcome to Jeeps, Mustangs, and more. I'm your host, Wade. Today I'd like to talk about building a rotisserie. Now, as you all know, the prices of car parts and steel and everything have skyrocketed. And the prices of rotisseries and lifts and all the equipment to, to do body work, everything has just gotten very expensive. So I decided it would be most economical and somewhat fun uh, to build my own rotisserie. Um, I do have some help from friends and I have a blueprint that I printed offline. Uh, it was a PDF. It's a great company. They have wonderful details through the whole thing. Uh, materials list. Uh, we're able to piece together lots of different things from either scrap metal or brand new metal. Uh, some of it uh, came from uh, used scrap yards, new metal uh, places around town. Some of it was shipped from uh, like Discount Steel, which is now Cormark Metals. This is what it's supposed to look like when it's done. And each of these plans we're going through step by step and it gives you lots of wonderful details. You can tell it's been used, it's a little dirty. But each piece of metal is selected and then welded together. This rotisserie will be for this Mustang here. This is a 72 Mustang Coupe. And I know it's uh, quite a bit ugly right now, but uh, it'll look a lot better once the full restoration is done. I'm still in the teardown phase and I'll have some separate videos over just the Mustang. But, uh, so far, the progress on the rotisserie is one end. I don't have the support bar. One of these will be on this side. That'll be the next step. Um, I did buy some grade 8 hardware from uh, Cormark Metals uh, that is weldable. That's supposed to go for the nuts that weld on to each of the pieces for the accessories and the pieces that are there. Um, this is the welder I'm using. It's an Eastwood MP250i. So far it has been great. Uh, as you can tell by looking at some of these wells, it's doing a wonderful job. Um, I'm not a professional welder, but I have been trained by some professional welders, uh, various couple of different welding shops. And of course my father taught me how to weld as well. He grew up on a farm and you have to weld all of your equipment together yourself. You can't wait for a welder to drive many miles out. We do most of our own work anyway, so, and this is the rest of the metal. Um, I went in with a buddy on some of the metal because he's got a Mustang that he wants to uh, put the rotisserie on as well. The, so far, the metal has cost us about uh, $450. And then the wheels are about uh, $30 a piece. Um, I expect to at least spend another $130 on the wheels. I do have an example of one of the casters. They call for a six inch caster in the um, man in the plans that we have. Let's see if I can get this out. There we go. And I ended up going with a six inch caster like it said, but I'm going with the 1200 pound capacity. The original is either an 800 or a 900 pound. And uh, this Mustang here is 39, I'm sorry, 39.95, so 3,995 pounds fully loaded. And these doors here are extremely heavy, though they may not be on when they're on the rotisserie, but I'll be adding some uh, subframes with um, a lot of beefier extra crossbars, a drive shaft loop, that ties into the the pieces of the subframe connectors, and that's going to add quite a bit of weight. Uh, but anyway, this is my first rotisserie build, uh, so I just wanted to kind of beef it up any way that I could. And this is, of course, just part one uh, of a multi-part video that I'll do. I'll get some of the welding action in there too. Um, I do have some separate little clips I'll include for the welding. Um, it's using uh, the gas that I'm using for the welding is 
a 75 argon and a 25 percent carbon dioxide it's been welding it just fine it's a 0.045 mig wire and it has been welding it can weld up to half inch in a single pass now i've been doing most of these welds all single pass without any issues at all a few of them i had to adjust um, and go over a second time because it didn't get the wire speed and the temperature quite right uh, but other than that it's been a great welder and a fun project uh, i've got a few things i've got to grind off here and then of course we'll sand it all down and paint it i'd like to get it powder coated but um, the cost of powder coating is not exactly economical and this is all to save money you can keep painting it over and over again for pretty inexpensive so this is a lot uh, as you can see here I got that uh, core mark metals there and they had all the black pipe they had the uh, two inch that I needed I could not find any scrap metal two inch I found some scrap metal three inch uh, two and a half inch with the uh, three sixteenths sidewalls and then these gossets are all um, quarter inch four inch uh, flat plate steel that is quarter inch thick um, I'm also trying out the uh, Harbor Freight chop saw here with a new DeWalt blade uh, That's hopefully supposed to go better uh, the previous blade um, Was not great for the thicker metals and the Harbor Freight uh, disc that came with this uh, wouldn't cut through it at all uh, so Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hope it's informative. I'll um, have another part to see the progress of this. I've got to put flat plates on here for the casters. There'll be three casters on each end, and this is just the first end. Uh, the next phase will be uh, the second end that goes on the other side of the car. Uh, for this Mustang, the mounts for the front will be here for the bumper. Um, I plan on using these um, bumper brackets that are on the factory bumper uh, to make the piece of tube that will go on the bracket for the rotisserie and the rear bracket that uh, they already have in the plans are for the shackles. So if the shackles are not sturdy enough, uh, you have to make sure there's a lot of Mustangs out there and a lot of different other cars that'll have the floorboard, the trunk floorboards rusted out and usually that will mean that the shackles are rusted out too. In this case they are sturdy uh, so I lucked out but there are other things you can do. You can redo the shackles before putting on the rotisserie but the rotisserie is really there for adding subframe connectors and for me as well, it's going to be getting rid of all of this really nasty um, undercoating that came on the car in 1972. And I have a heat gun and a scraper to get it off with, but uh, doing that on a creeper with the hot, you know, melting uh, pieces of undercoating going on your face and arms and clothes is just not pleasant at all. So the rotisserie is going to make that. So much better it's going to lift this car up in the air and flip the cars underside to where you can stand and work on the cars underneath without having to um, have a lift again this is your host wade and thanks for tuning in thank you for watching please like and subscribe to see more in the next parts of these videos